If you're watching Public Affairs, Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Ted Dabrowski. He, of course, is the newly, relatively newly minted president of Wirepoint or Wirepoints, wirepoint.com. Mm -hmm. Wirepoints.com. Wirepoints, mm -hmm. Okay, Wirepoints. And so what are we talking about? We're just going to get right to it. We'll come back with a little bit more about Ted as we get into the show. He knows a lot about public, specter, public sector spending and taxes. He knows a lot about public sector pensions. And so, Ted, for these folks who are watching, some say, if you're watching and you're in Illinois, you should be a little bit concerned about whether you're going to be able to keep your job, keep your pension, and keep your home or at least the equity in the home. Have I gotten that right? You've gotten that right. Why, why are people, why do they have to worry about that stuff? What's well, going know, on? Everybody understands the state pension crisis we have. At least, at least people hear about it, right? The $130 billion shortfall, or the, more properly, the $250 billion shortfall we have at the state level. But the same crisis that we're having at the state level, I would argue, in many cases, is, is even more acute at the city level. Our municipalities have, nearly all of them have a big crisis funding their police and pension. Uh, police and fire pensions, and it's leading to a big mess. They're deeply underfunded. It's eating up more and more of the tax dollars that would normally go to roads or public health. It's pushing up taxes, property taxes, and it's creating real chaos in, in cities. So is it just that people have been sort of deadbeats? So like the people in Harvey, perhaps, okay? Are they just deadbeats or the people in Niles, the people in Springfield? You know, because if only they would put in the right amount of money, you know, fund these pensions. If they had been doing that the last 30 years, we'd have no problem, right? And so now, should we make the deadbeats pay? Yeah, Raise their taxes, well, the right? The deadbeats would be the, the, the people of Illinois, right? The, who, like the who whole, taxes, so the right? whole, okay, but did all of these people sort of get away with something for 30 years. They got lower taxes because they didn't fund these pensions properly. That's what some people say. Well, that's what a lot of people like to say. They like to it's blame, not true. They like to blame the taxpayer in the end, right? If you're blaming not enough money being in the pension plans, then you're implicitly blaming or explicitly blaming taxpayers. Right. Uh, if you look at what taxpayers pay, they pay a lot of money, both in income taxes and property taxes. Today, we have the highest property taxes in the nation. And when you add up all state and local taxes, we're among the top 10 for the highest taxes. So people are overtaxed in Illinois. So the when, bigger point, the yeah, bigger point, okay. Jeff, is that, yeah. and what people don't talk about, is how fast and how much these pension liabilities have grown in Illinois. The amount of benefits that we owe our government workers has just ballooned, and it's overwhelming our economies, people's pocketbooks, people's equity is taking more and more taxes. So give us some out. idea. What's the order of magnitude here? If we said, if I said to you over the 30 years, less 30 years, how much, uh, how much have, have incomes gone up? If you aggregated that in the state of Illinois, the taxpayers, have well, their incomes have gone up over the last 30 years? Yeah, well, if you look at household incomes, for yeah, example, right? Yeah. And, and, and whatever the number was back 30 years ago to oh. today, what it's percent? up about, 100, about 125 percent. So, okay, so, so a doubling, a little more than double. Yeah, okay. so what, 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 what about pensions? What's happened now there? Now with pensions, you know, so if you look at what the state owed all workers and retirees 30 years ago, it was about $18 billion. Today, it's about $200 billion. So we're talking about a thousand percent increase. So you're talking about the pension obligations that we have, the pensions that we owe in total have grown about a thousand percent, nearly 10 times more than inflation, about eight times more than incomes. So why? It's overwhelming everything. Why have pension benefits gone up so radically in the last 30 years? Well, one is that we, we've had a clause that says you can't cut benefits or you can't diminish them, you can't impair them. Who, who said that? Well, that's what the Constitution says. The Illinois Constitution. The Illinois Constitution. You can't impair them, you can't cut them. But it doesn't say anything about not increasing them. And uh, we just put something out the other day that, that shows how often they've been increased. Cost of living adjustments have been increased. The amount that um, the workers get for every year, every year work has gone up. They can accumulate sick leave that's pensionable. There's so many things that are now pensionable that it's, uh, it's just uh, it's so, hard to say. Let me give you the second point. Okay, it's very yeah, important. Okay. We have the most units of local government in the nation, in Illinois. And that means we have lots of bureaucrats all over the place. Like what? And they're all well paid. What kind? School what example? Uh, school, school districts, districts you're counting that? Park yeah. districts. Mosquito abatement districts. Library districts. Townships. Village, yeah, okay. It just goes on and on. Uh -huh. We have 7,000 units of government. And when you think about 
the number of people it takes to run that. And then when you think what about the executive pay. What does a normal state pay, have? Is there a comparable state? And how many, I, I'll give you an how many, municipal, how many units of government, say, does Pennsylvania have? Is there, they've just passed Illinois in population, right? Pennsylvania is now number five. Illinois is number yeah, six. Yeah, I won't tell you the number that Pennsylvania okay. has, but I, what I will tell you okay. is that, for example, I'll give you two extremes. Um, Illinois has 860 school districts, which means all kinds of superintendents, back office people, right? Lots of extra people. Uh, the, the state of Florida has just 67. They have it by county. So you can think about the reduction in the number of top bureaucrats you have and the number of top pensions that you have. You know, when you add all that stuff up, it's why we have a problem in could, Illinois. Could we, because a lot of people like the idea of local control, like the city of Chicago is 400,000 students or so. That's kind of big. If you go to a school That's board extreme, meeting, yes. yes. That's if you, do, you know, if you're in Wilmette, there are 30,000 people in that Wilmette grade school school district. Correct. So can we still have those things? Is there a way we could have those things and not have the problem that you're talking yeah, about, I, that I, local control of education? I think we need to make sure we don't confuse local control with abuse and duplication and waste. And what we have today is massive amounts of overlap, duplication, and it's, people are getting rich. you got superintendents who are getting rich, multimillionaires, from having that kind of structure. And that's taking money away from... What does from, that mean? Can you give us an example of well, somebody getting rich? Uh, you know, the, the, I live in Wilmette, and yeah. uh, our current superintendent is retiring next year. He announced it. Uh, we calculated his pension, and when he, when he retires, he will expect over his lifetime uh, about $6.6 .6 million in, in pension wow. benefits. What's his current you know? salary? Do you know roughly? Oh, he's, he's at the 250000 level. So, you know, you've got people getting rich, and when we're talking about places like Chicago or the South Side where they don't have enough money for public safety or education. You can see where the money's going. We've got to scale back all that, and a lot of that has to do with pensions. So, okay, so you've, um, so you've been focusing a lot on cities and villages. You've been talking and you've been writing in WirePoints, wirepoints.com about, uh, was it 200 cities and villages are underfunded. They're not, they haven't paid in, was it near 2016? Correct. They didn't pay in what they were supposed to, these 200 cities and villages, right? Yeah, to the police pension funds or the to police and fire funds. They underfunded that year. They might have mm -hmm. underfunded before. And they've underfunded many, many, many years. Many, years. Sure. Okay, so that's, that's quite a few underfunding. And, what's the, and the extreme example that you wrote about recently was Harvey, right? Right. Why is that an extreme? So Harvey is an extreme. The, they're, they are the first city in Illinois to have, last year, have the courts mandate because they weren't paying their, their pension funds. They were mandated by the courts to raise their taxes in order to make more payments to pensions. And then this year, the state comptroller used a new law to garnish monies that go from the state to the city. They garnish those revenues to put them into the pension funds. And it's because Harvey has been uh, derelict at, uh, at funding their pensions. And, and this is a big problem that's not just in Harvey, but everywhere. Harvey is the extreme, and we can what, go into that. So what, what actually happened? What triggered it? So um, you're saying they garnished. There's, there's this word intercept? Intercept, yeah, garnish. Did, this, did the comptroller intercept? So Harvey raises tax money, right? And they think they're going to take that money that they got in coming in for taxes, and they're going to pay it to their current employees, which would be current firemen, people who are working there now, Correct. policemen. And they thought they were going to use that money for that. But the state comptroller, um, Susanna it. Mendoza, she grabbed it. She intercepted it. Mm -hmm. It was like a football, it was like a, D a DB, defensive back, saw the ball coming, going to the flanker. The DB steps in front, intercepts. So... This was a case, our state comptroller, and she was required to do this by law, right? Susanna Mendoza, she had to do it because what happened? What forced Susanna Mendoza to go ahead and intercept those funds? They don't go to current employees, they go into the pension fund. Yeah, so they have a, a, a relatively new law that says if a pension fund can certify and prove that they did not receive the right amount of money from their sponsoring city, in this case Harvey, uh, they could go to the comptroller and say, comptroller, I did not receive my full funds and then the comptroller is obligated and must intercept those monies. And that's what happened. And now the reason why Harvey's so important is because when those monies were intercepted, uh, Harvey didn't have enough money to then pay its payroll. And it fired nearly half of his public safety staff. 
And then we're finding out, that's helping us find out the true depths of the problem. That if you have our cities, if the cities are forced to pay their bills, they can't. And that's where the chaos is going to come in because you're going to see this across the board. You're hearing already many cities warning that they're going to have to fire public safety workers. But the pension trustees, I guess, for fire and police who went to the state comptroller and said they're underfunding, who had certified that, they're kind of obligated to do that by their fiduciary obligation, right? Well, they are, or they should be. They I should argue be. that they should be. They're trustees of the pension fund. Right. They should be defending their pensions. So, like, it, did the same thing happen in North Chicago? And the same thing happened. So North Chicago was the second city. So Harvey and North Chicago cleared the way for trustees to understand how the process works. Now, and both cities, uh, sorry, both pension funds from those cities were successful in get, making the intercept happen. But, and so in Harvey's case, they intercepted and then they had to lay off, because the comptroller intercepted, they had to lay off fire, man, police, and perhaps other resources, other individuals. Did uh, North Chicago do the same thing? North Chicago did not have to do the same they thing. They had a little bit more flexibility, so even though the money was diverted now, to go into the pensions, they had enough left so they didn't have to lay anybody It off. also depends on how much reserves the state or is, is, well, is intercepting, right? It, oh, I so, it so it depends on that. Now, what I do know is that, that North Chicago is struggling too. Don't be surprised so if, you, may, hear, they if they you hear some layoffs in the near future. And then other cities and villages may do the same thing. Their pension trustees may say, well, we, we're, we're obligated. We have fiduciary responsibilities. These cities are not funding our pensions, so they technically there should be a lot more, right? Well, you know, assuming I, I, I mean this happens in 2016, are they basing this intercept based on the 2016 data or 2017? Well, this or, is the hard part, and yeah. you know, the law is not very clear, so there's some little, confusion. Yeah, and okay. So some trustees are saying, "What should I be doing?" But I argue, I argue okay. that if if this is the way that uh, you can help uh, the pension funds get funded, you should have a huge line outside. Mendoza's door saying, we want money for our pensions. The main, We're not seeing it today. So the main thing is, these governments have a problem. The taxpayers have a problem. Uh, people who have pensions want to be able to have retirement. So um, one way to solve it, if they could do it, if, we, if somebody could do it, maybe they can't, would be to cut their benefits, but they would still have some retirement. Or, or their home, we could tax more, which would tend to decrease the value of their home, their equity in the home. So they would be, some people would give up some of their equity, or some people might have to give up some of their job. But I think that was State Representative Jeannie Ives, who said, look, you're either going to have to, if nothing changes here, you're either going to lose some of your retirement, you're going to lose some of your equity in your home, or you're going to lose some of your job, right? It's almost like you arithmetic. Can't have, you can't have them all. It's arithmetic, right? right? This is math. But... Okay, so maybe we come back to how we got, the main problem here is benefits, pension benefits yeah. grew way too rapidly, these <laughs> obligations grew way too rapidly. We can come back as to why, but it's really important because the solution here, what kinds of solutions do we have? Do we have anything else? I mean, I guess somebody would say just raise taxes, right? Well, look, let, let me just be clear. These benefits have grown tremendously, Jeff. There's and, and if you look at what the taxpayers actually put in, it's also grown a lot. It's just that it yeah. can never keep up with the benefits. Because so, of that 1,000% increase in benefits and only 100% yeah, or like so. Yeah, you can run as fast as you want. Increase you in income, in right. Bolt, right? Okay. It doesn't matter. So the point is, is that taxes that won't the work. Problem. The tax, and, tax increase is probably not going to be feasible. Well, is that what you're yeah, saying? Because you also have to be careful. Unless you change the, the pension system, if we give more money to the politicians, what do we know they'll do with it? They'll give out more benefits. They'll grow again. Okay, okay, so you've got to solve the problem. So, so my first answer to you about how to solve the problem is you can't keep growing benefits like you're growing. If you continue to do that, nothing changes. So you have to stop it, which yeah, means, how do, how do you, do means that? you go to 401ks tomorrow for all new workers. Start number one. Doesn't what does solve that the mean, problem. 401k? A 401k style plan. You just give a 401k style plan to all new a workers. means defined, a defined contribution, contribution as opposed to a defined benefit. Correct. Okay. No more pensions. You do a 401k okay. like they are in the private sector. Okay. Now, that doesn't solve the problem because we still have this huge debt out there. So uh, number two is you got to bring the unions to the table. If you look at the Chicago uh, fire and the Chicago police funds, they are bankrupt. They should be at the table right now demanding negotiations to, to fix their problem. And it might mean giving up some of the benefits like cost of living adjustments and things like that. 
But um, they're headed towards bankruptcy, just like a whole bunch of cities are. Who's so, headed toward bankruptcy? Chicago Police Fund and okay. Chicago Fire Fund. They are bankrupt. They are bankrupt. They're not headed towards bankruptcy. They are bankrupt not legally. They're just insolvent. They're just not going to have what it takes to meet their future obligations no in terms of benefits. No way. It's so the pension fund itself can declare bankruptcy? Is that, is that well, the case now? Or look, at some point... Are you using gonna, it loosely? I'm you don't know if they can really actually technically they're insolvent. file it. They're, they're insolvent. insolvent, yeah. yeah and, okay. and soon they'll be paying out more than they take in. Okay, so that we've covered the local level, but a similar thing is happening on the state level, right? Yeah. Because there you said we have, depending on the calculations which you all go through, we either have $130 billion in unfunded liabilities for pensions or we've got 250 mm -hmm. The point is there's no way really to raise taxes enough to deal with that, is there? Well, you can try to raise taxes, but we've already lost population four years in a row. And Who has? Been, Illinois? Illinois, right? Illinois. We, only, okay. we joined West Virginia as the one, only two states okay. to lose population four years in a row. And, that, and you think that's, because some people say it's unrelated to well, what let, we're doing listen, on taxes. It, it's, it, let's, let's be clear about this. People don't move just because of taxes. People leave because they don't have opportunity. And then if you try to tax a lot more in a place that's corrupt, bankrupt, and all the money's not going to give you new services, it's gonna only going to go to pensions of, of things already, but, already and done. And when we say raise taxes, we raise the individual income tax, but I think by constitution, it would also raise the corporate tax. And if you raise the corporate tax, not only do individuals leave, but corporations start leaving or they don't come here because now it's more costly than it was before yeah. to do business in Illinois. Okay, so if we can't raise taxes, and if the Illinois constitution says we can't cut benefits, diminish that, um, and in El the, the Illinois government has not, half the states in the country, the villages and cities can declare bankruptcy, bankruptcy right? but in Illinois we haven't given the villages and cities that right. The Illinois legislature could do that, right? The feds could give Illinois the right to declare bankruptcy, but they haven't done that. They haven't done that yet. So we don't have that bankruptcy option now, but that's something that you think should be on the table? Well, I think it should be on the table, certainly for uh, local governments. Look, let me, let me make another point clear. So many places have already passed the point of no return. They're headed towards some form of bankruptcy, whether it's legal or they're insolvent and can't pay the bills. Like, like Harvey's already So it would be like there. a de facto bankruptcy, de facto. and then they go to the creditors and say, look, we can't meet everybody, so why don't you guys sit around the table like we are yeah. informally, and, and, you'll, and somebody will get a little less here, some creditor will get a little less there, and that's called a workout, a restructuring. And sometimes the threat of bankruptcy will cause the creditors to come to the table. Exactly. But since there's no threat of bankruptcy here, is that why people aren't coming to the table? Well, we'll see because it may not matter, right? Okay. If you look at a place like Harvey, they're already having to choose who to pay and who not to pay. They've already defaulted on bonds before. They've defaulted on their pensions. It's a mess. But, but, but Jeff, the important point is about the state. The state, I would argue, with all its debts, when you add up the $250 billion pension, $56 billion that it owes in retiree health care, uh, and all the other just normal debt that it has. It's, it's, it's hard to think of a way it gets out of it without some kind of renegotiation of debts. Which means and you probably call that, so. call that whatever you want, but it's, uh, it's, there's, it's just too much to ask of the taxpayers and the state to pay down, and especially with the threat of losing people if you force them to pay it. And, you know, we got a mayor's election coming up, right? And we got 10 candidates. And you say Chicago, we haven't mentioned it, but I assume they're in a somewhat similar position to other cities and villages across the state of Illinois where they're going to be kind of pressed to pay all of their pension benefits for police and fire? They're very pressed. When you look at the average, okay. average Chicago one, they're on the hook for Cook County problems, and they're huge. They're on the hook for the city problems, police, fire, municipal, laborers. They're also on the hook for... Uh, the school district, well, which is, said he school district is massively okay. in trouble, and you've got the water reclamation okay. and others. So it's a big, big thing, and you're, you can't keep going after the same taxpayer for multiple problems. And that's already happened, and to do it again... Uh, Ron said he, he, he's been there, you know, seven years, and he's adopted some reforms. They pushed it through the city council. You're saying that's not really enough? No, they haven't done anything. They haven't done anything? No, no. Okay. Nothing to solve their real problems across the board. So you would expect one or several of the 10 candidates 
for mayor in the city of Chicago to maybe adopt what you're saying and saying we got to start pressing the state legislature to give us the right to declare bankruptcy, right? Well, you know, somebody needs to be a fiscal realist. And part of that would include, I would argue, for CPS, for example, allow it to go bankrupt. Renegotiate. There's, there's but no who way. has to do... So the city of Chicago would need the legislature to give them that right. That's right. Does CPS have to do the same thing? Well, so, so the Does somebody state, in the, the state, state has legislature to, has to give CPS, the state has which to is a unit of the city government? The state has to authorize... Uh, local bankruptcies. It's a state law. Or but state I don't law. hear anybody, do you, I mean, you follow this. I don't hear anybody running for mayor saying this. No, why do you yeah. suppose that might be? Well, it's hard to run on that, right? It's, it's why for, why for, would that be hard? Scary because who, who would be upset if one of the candidates for mayor stood up and said, hey, we ought to declare bankruptcy. We ought to have CPS allowed to do it because they can't meet all their obligations for pensions and otherwise. Who do you think would be upset if CPS said that? Well, you know, it's an interesting question. They shouldn't be upset. Nobody should be. But who sorry, do you nobody think? should be scared. No, but let me let me explain. Well, okay. the, uni the okay. unions don't want it, of course, right? right. Chicago the, the Teachers Union, the teachers union, would be union very doesn't upset. want it. Uh, the, the unions still are being told a message that Il uh, Illinois and Chicago can be fixed with more tax hikes. They're being sold that message. The, and, who, who's who is selling them the message? Well, you've got lots of groups who sell that, right? Civic Fed, BGA, uh, Better Government Civic Association, Federation, Civic Federation, Better Government Association. Uh, you've got. All the lots of Center for Tax and Budget Accountability, sure. Ralph Martiri. Yeah, all of them want a progressive tax hike. There's others who want a tax hike on. Uh, so on you don't the think South that Street. would work? Well, you just you just hit the wealthy people. They pay their share. How do you got like two or three percent really wealthy people? The other ninety-seven percent don't pay more. Doesn't it work that way? Well, the thing is, the people have a choice of where they live, right? So they might they and, may and go. We live in the most digital global okay. environment uh, we've ever lived in. People can choose where they live. But so the unions, though, you, um, um, so are you saying basically the unions are a major barrier, whether it's AFSME on the state level, whether it's the Chicago Teachers Union for the teachers, whether it's similar for the city unions, police and fire. They're just saying, look, we're in a sweet position here. You guys got a problem, but you can't declare bankruptcy. The Constitution says you can't diminish our benefits. We're just going to tough it out. Yeah, they're going to say, pay is that up. what they're saying? Basically, yeah, they're saying, saying pay up, okay. and, and they think that a a progressive tax, a LaSalle tax, a sale, uh, you know, tax uh, on on um, services, uh, retirement income. They've got a lot of things that they want to tax, ignoring the fact that people are on ATMs, and so, the, a lot of people are already struggling with the highest property taxes. Okay, in the so nation. you don't anticipate any of the ten candidates for mayor will probably, but they're all Democrats. They're all kind of tight with the unions, probably, right? It's not a partisan election in Chicago, That's right. but I think if we asked them and we, they were under truth serum, they'd have to say they're Democrats, right? And Democrats usually align with unions. So nobody's going to buy this. I mean, we're just, you're just dreaming, Ted. It's going to take a different message. Well, the dreaming, the dreaming is thinking that Chicago <laughs> can come out of this without, without well, a bankruptcy. Here's what they, do. That's the, the dreaming. The, the politicians who are running, say, like, Okay, Rom, he's done seven years, he just gives four, he won't try to do Taylor. See, he can make it through 11 and then he retires and does something else. And, you know, the Democrats who control the State House and the State Senate, same thing. Carlton will be gone soon, Madigan will be gone soon. It's uh, you're kicking the can down the road, it's somebody else's problem. All I'm saying, isn't this rational? If you were them, wouldn't you do it? You don't want to take on the unions if you're Colton or if you're Madigan, right? It's rationality. You guys at LMI Policy, well, they, they don't, we, not, when you were at IPI, you believed in rationality. Now that you're at, um, at wirepoints.com, you believe in rationality, right? Well, the rational thing is to expect bankruptcy. The rational thing is to, to understand that there's not enough money for, for the benefits. Really? You the think? rational thing okay. is that people are leaving. Okay. The you know, population is shrinking. That's what's rational, and that's what you have to take into account. And so your solutions have to be based on that. And any solution outside of that is dreaming. Anything thinking that you're going to tax your way out of it. Listen, but are we, they, so got, are listen they all, hey, Jeff, this no, is an important point. We've got, yes, we're in our okay. ninth year of an economic recovery. We've got stock markets at an all-time high. Right. And yet our pensions get worse every year. They can't keep up. They're such a, the holes are so big and the benefits are growing so much they can't keep up. So, what's so your imagine, point about, yeah. imagine when the recession comes. Imagine when the stock market correction comes. What the heck is going to happen? All these pension why, funds. Why? Why is that a trigger? Why is that a problem? If, this, if the recession comes, that is the economy turns down. We have lower rates of we growth have, of the what? economy. We even have decline in GDP. So we have, we decline, have decline, in, decline in income, tax rev, declining decline revenues, decline in tax revenue, tax revenues for the government, and at the same time, lower returns from the stock market. 
So, so those, interest rates going down are kind of a bad thing because that means you have to pump more money into the pensions in order to meet your obligations. Or to stay, because to stay, your, to your rate water, of return is going to be lower. Water. Right. right. And, so if have, and if you have negative rates of return, you actually lose value. That's when you think you probably have to go toward bankruptcy in the next recession. Well, it, right? may, it may be hard to avoid. And, and the important point is you know, we, we, we just had a budget pass. Right, 2019 budget. budget. 2019 yeah, it's budget. great because everybody said, look, we had a budget. The Democrats agreed. The Republicans agreed. Rauner said Madigan was the best thing since sliced bread. Well, not quite, but he did compliment him. And that was all lovey-dovey. I mean, Rauner stood up there with Democrats and Republicans behind him. It was kumbaya. Hey, Jeff, they did nothing. Were you there? I mean, are you? don't you get into kumbaya? Aren't you like a former hippie or something? I mean, it's you know, they, cool. they did nothing. They did they nothing did to nothing, stop really? any of the trends in that budget. What they did is they did a kumbaya returning to go along, get along. And... Um, so Rauner kind of sold stop. out. Did he sell out again, or should he have? Because he said there was some pension reform in there, and there was, right? And, and it I, might say four or five hundred million dollars, and that's he said that's a start, right? That's it's marginal. We we have the worst pension crisis in the in the nation. We should have the boldest reforms right now. We can't do marginal. Um, so why is he doing hey, it? Jeff, yeah, you asked ahead. me. He, yeah. he he said he's going to shake up Springfield. What just happened last week was not a shake up. That was, was a kumbaya. That was a kumbaya. A shake-up shake doesn't tried, look like he that. Tried for, he, tried for, he had the turnaround agenda, right? He had all these reforms. He couldn't get any of them. Madigan blocked him. He says, I tried. Isn't that what the governor said? I mean, if the governor says he tried and he couldn't do it, and Madigan and Democrats blocked him, what, do you, what would you do if you were there? He, know, he needed to make the case for reforms. He needed to make the case that we can't fund social services because we're giving out multi-million dollar pensions. right? He needed to make the case that Medicaid, the, the people that really need Medicaid can't get it because we've got a bloated Medicaid system where you've got too many people on it. They, they're they okay. squeezing the system and not giving it to the poorest of the poor. That's why you need reforms. And education too, because those are your main drivers, right? Education, in the state level, education and pensions and Medicaid counts for what, 70% of your That's budget, right. right? Yeah, and so he never reformed. He's never tried to reform K-12 through education. Did you ever talk all to the governor? District, all these school districts, all these, all these uh, multi-million dollar pensions, they continue untouched. So, but you guys at uh, the Illinois mm -hmm. Policy Institute, you were kind of tight with the governor, right? Well, Did you ever talk with him and tell him this stuff? So uh, the Illinois Policy Institute had a relationship with Rauner, and of yeah. course John Tillman had a relationship with and him. They kind of had a divorce, um, right? Yeah, they, they've had some kind of divorce, and you've seen, that, you've seen, divorce, that, you've seen right. that in the press. But, uh, okay. you know, I wasn't part of that, and so okay. I, I can't comment on that. Okay, we're, you know, we got like about a minute left here. What is it we haven't said that we think is, you think is crucial that our viewers know about? I think it's time to, to, to hit the fiscal reality that our cities are approaching bankruptcy, that Chicago is a major risk. It could bring down the state, and that the state itself um, runs a risk of it also becoming insolvent. It might take a while but it's on that path. And nothing is changing and, and until the people demand change from their elected officials, and they'll either continue to vote with their feet or they're gonna make demands. So we need to We're get gonna start getting to reforms, but people need to get angry. The, you know, they, they need, need to, to be demanding of the changes. They, they need, need to go to their legislatures and say, give the cities and villages the right to bankruptcy, then there will be restructuring, work, work it out. They need to go to these folks in the legislature or state and say, go to the feds, say, you want bankruptcy for Illinois. Uh, they could do a lot of reforms that could make it easier. They can't solve all their problems without bankruptcy. So you want reforms, right? Yeah, but now, of course, you're talking purely pensions, right? But we need, the problem we oh, have sir, is... Oh, so yeah, the, the second problem, right, The, the okay. problem is that we have, we have a cultural problem, I just, right? I just want to remind folks, this guy knows what he's talking about. Georgia Tech, undergraduate business degree, Wharton degree, business school, uh, Citibank, 16 years, Harris, University of Chicago, Masters of Public Administration. Vic, he's devoted... The last, I don't know, many, many years on this. So he might be right. We may need all these things he said. And just remember, the main thing is you come back next week and every week to public affairs, not to see Berkowitz. He's nothing. People like Ted Dabrowski. I mean, they got the answers, right? Of course We're he trying. does. All right.